Good morning, everyone. It's Brenda Quintana here. And today I'm going to be sharing a fancy full card with you. It's two weeks in a row I've been doing cards. We'll get back to 3D projects soon. But I know a lot of you really love fancy full cards and you're gonna love this one. You may recognize this fold, it's called a bench fold, but I have given my bench fold card a little twist that I think you're really gonna love. One of the twists is that I've designed mine to fit into a standard medium size Stampin' Up! envelope. And a lot of times um, we want to be able to fit that card into a regular size envelope so we don't have to make a new envelope. Plus, I've given my card a closure on the front and I'm calling it my garden shed card. And you could do this with, if you're making it into a different type of card with a different theme, um, it has kind of like the um, French door type opening. So it opens in the center and then the card spreads out. So it's actually longer um, than a typical bench fold card once everything is folded out. But the cool part about this card is that it's going to fit inside that medium size envelope. So I'm gonna show you how to do that today. And for those of you who know me, um, I and are on my email list, you will know that on Saturdays, I will send you out a project sheet for the card. And so all you need to do is get on my email list and the link for that is down below in the description of the video. Um, and then um, on Saturdays, uh, pretty much every single Saturday, you're gonna get a project sheet in your inbox that you can um, download, print out, keep on your iPad or computer. And it's just a nice like condensed sort of version of my project. And it will have the link to the video on there because sometimes we need the measurements and sometimes we need to refer back to the video to see how everything comes together. Sometimes that's hard to show in a project sheet, but the project sheet is nice because it has all the measurements written down for you. All right, well, I am going to jump right in. Please feel free to chat if you're live and um, uh, talk amongst yourselves, ask questions. This is your chance to ask questions. If I'm doing something and something doesn't make sense, please ask. If you have the question, probably there's someone else that has the same question and I can answer it. Um, while we're live and um, get it taken care of. Now, if you're watching this as a replay, please feel free to leave a comment down below. I love reading comments. I, it just makes me happy when I hear someone's made um, the card or the project that I've demonstrated. That brings me a lot of joy because um, sometimes I'm here in my little craft room and I don't know what's going on in the outside world. So uh, I would love to hear from you. Leave me a comment, give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate that. All right, let me pop over to my other camera and we're gonna get started. I am actually gonna die cut all the pieces to this card. Um, this is a special card and I wanna show you how everything will come together. So let me get started. All right, I've got a lot of pieces. Here's the project sheet. I'm gonna pop this up because I'm gonna follow along to, trust me, when I'm making my own card, I need my project sheet too. All right, so here, let me show you what the card looks like. You probably wanna see that. Okay, so here is the card and it's got the doors that open so it kind of looks like a little bit like a shed right so it opens like this okay so this length from here to here is 11 inches long which is i think actually longer than a typical um uh, bench fold card so the, the thing that makes it a bench fold is this little piece right here so the cards like this and it's flat and then this piece comes out and then you push the center piece down and it creates like a little bench or a little countertop, right? So now you can display this card open like that and it looks, it looks kind of cool, okay? And you may have seen that, but the cool part about this card, you just, you know, you flip this up, fold it like this, like this, and where's my medium envelope? So it will, I'm not gonna shove it in there now, but you can see it's gonna fit inside that little medium envelope and you'll be able to mail it. And it's, you know, it is 
just a little bulky, but it's actually not as bulky as I thought it would be. It's actually uh, pretty flat as far as a card goes. As long as you don't add um, like ribbon or anything to the front of this, um, it's going to be a fairly flat card to fold. I think this will just um, mail. If you make it exactly like mine, it will probably just take just one regular stamp to um, put through the mail. Okay, so that's the card. Let's talk about what I used to make the card. So I'm using the Home and Garden dies. Um, so Home and Garden bundle, which includes the Home and Garden stamp set and the Garden dies. Now this bundle is retiring in June. So this is a caveat here. We are at the end of April, 2022. And um, these are still available. I checked last night, um, they're available right now, but we're getting very close to the time when these are gonna be retiring. So I'm a little concerned if these, if there's a run on these dies that um, they may not get them, they may not reorder them because it's such a short period of time left in the selling period. So if you like these, just don't wait too long before you get them because I don't want you to be disappointed um, with them selling out. Um, and also the paper I'm using today, it's called Heart and Home. And Heart and Home has some busier patterns on one side, but then it's got a lot of these kind of neutral wood patterns on the other side, which is perfect for my little garden shed because you can see right here, I created kind of the look of a, a shed on the front. And then I use the same paper to create these little cupboards down on the inside. So this is a nice um, paper to use with this project. And the cool thing about this is you can also turn this, um, this is a good masculine card set. It can be a feminine card as well. It's um, got the birthday wishes in it and then it's got happy Father's Day as well. So you could make it into a Father's Day card or you could make it into a birthday card. So lots of options for you. Okay, I've done a lot of talking. So let's get started with our card base. And we're gonna need our scoring board. Bring that out. And then we're going to, all, most of my pieces are in basic gray cardstock in case I forget to mention it later on. This is basic gray. And this first piece is seven and a quarter inches by four and a quarter inches. I'm gonna scoot that up at the top, find my stylus tool. And we're gonna score both of these on, um, on we're gonna score both long ends. So. Um, the long side is up at the top and we're going to score at the one and a half inch mark and the two and three eighths inch mark. Then we're going to flip it to the other long side and do the same. So we're going to score the same on both ends, one and a half and two and three eighths. All right. That's the first piece. This is what I'm going to call the card base. While we're here, we're going to go ahead and score some of our other pieces. This is piece is what I'm going to call the bench support piece. This is three inches by half an inch. And this piece, you're going to score at the quarter inch mark on both sides. All right, so that's my other little piece. Then let me have a look. Uh, we need a bridge piece. This one doesn't have any scoring on it. This bridge piece is um, five and a half inches by one and three quarter inches. Put that aside. Then we're going to grab our bench piece. This piece measures two and seven sixteenths inches by two and five eighths. So two and seven sixteenths is just one sixteenth less than half an inch. So get to the two and a half inch mark and make it just one sixteenth left, one not, one notch less. Say that quickly a few times. So two and seven sixteenths 
by just double checking my measurements two and five eighths put that two and five eighths inch side up at the top and then we're going to score at the one and three quarter inch mark this is our little bench piece okay and then finally we're going to have a piece we're going to create our doors for the front so you're going to need two four and a quarter by four and a quarter inch squares four and a quarter by four and a quarter and put any side up at the top and score at the one and a half inch mark I think I've done all my scoring. So we got all of that out of the way right at the beginning. So let's start to put these pieces together. So we've got I have a diagram in my project sheet that will show all of these pieces. Actually, it will show all the pieces with everything on them already. But just to go through them again, card front, or should, I should say card base, bench support, the bridge piece, the actual bench, and then these are the two side doors. All right, we'll start off with the card base and we're going to use our bone folder and we're going to fold from left to right we're going to make this one a mountain fold okay so that's a left then this one's going to be a valley fold then this one's another valley fold and then this one's a mountain fold if that doesn't make any sense to you, let me just hold this up so you can see what it looks like. So this first, the out, outside two score lines are mountains and the inside two are valleys, okay? So when the card folds together, it actually folds like this. One of these side panels collapses and comes over like this on the back. So that's how that works. All right. So then we're going to take our little, this is our little uh, bridge support piece. And we've got these two little quarter inch tabs on the outside. So this is gonna fit in here in the center piece like that. We just wanna make ourselves one little mark though. I want, um, our bench is one and three quarter inches tall so I'm gonna make myself a little pencil mark at the one and three quarter inch mark you can ba barely see that it's um, one and three quarter inches up from the bottom and then we're going to glue this piece in the best way to do that is I'm just gonna line this up grab my Tombow put a little Tombow on the end and I'm gonna lay this flat. I wanna glue this to the side walls. I'm gonna do this one first. I'm gonna press this down. And what I did was I just put it just beside the score line. Okay, so. You can kind of see how that's glued to this side piece right here. Okay, and then this one is going to be glued to the other side piece. I just want to make sure that when this, it's going to fold flat really nicely. So when I put my Tombow on this little piece right here, it's already folded over and I'm going to bring it down along here and this is how the card is going to be when it's shut so I want to make sure there's no problem with the closure right here so that's why I'm just kind of keeping it just right along there just hold that down so that's what it's going to look like it's just a little tiny strip 
that's going to keep that bench piece from coming down too far. And you can see it's just a tiny bit below the one and three quarter inch mark. I don't know if you can see my little pencil mark anymore, but I just put it just, just a tiny bit below that, um, just so the, the bench can fold down. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do, we need our bridge piece. And our bridge piece is going to come along across here like this. And again, this is five and a half by one and three quarters, and it doesn't have any score marks on it. So we're going to put, you can put Tombow over on this side. And I'm going to use this as a guide right here not to put Tombow above this line right here. Okay, so we'll attach one side first. And you wanna make sure, take time to line it up. And then I'm gonna actually flatten this card again because the key with this card is you want it to be good when it's flat. So, Just press along there, make sure it's square. If you have any hangover here, there's just a little tiny hangover, you can just cut that off with some paper snips. Okay. All right, so I have this piece right here I have one extra little piece I'm going to add to it right now. I'm going to add kind of this metallic piece from the Silver Foil Specialty Pack. And I just cut a little piece to match this upper portion right here. This is going to be our little bench and it's easier to attach it now while it's flat. So this piece measures 2 and 7 sixteenths by seven eighths of an inch. So remember two and seven sixteenths is just one tick shorter than two and a half. Um, and if you have problems with that, just cut it to two and a half and then just cut off the excess off the side right here. Because, oops, you know what? I cut this wrong. This is wrong length right here. For some reason this piece got cut incorrectly because it has to fit in here. And I don't know what, I must have grabbed the wrong piece from over there. I'm going to cut this a little shorter. Let me see if the one side is correct. It is. Okay, I actually cut this to uh, uh, just below three inches. Let me fix my measurement right here. It won't affect the scoring or anything. I just cut it to the wrong length. It needs to be two and seven sixteenths. Fix that right now. Let's see if that fits. Yes, there we go. Good idea to test out your pieces before you put it on, just in case you measured wrong. So this is going to fit down into here and it's going to um, be like that on there. Okay, the reason we cut it to two and seven sixteenth is this opening is two and a half. And if I cut my piece to two and a half, it would be really super tight and you don't want that. Okay, so, oh, and I cut this one the wrong measurement too. Fix that right now. I don't know what I was thinking when I was cutting. So we'll do two and seven sixteenth. I went one tick below three inches instead of one tick below two and a half inches is what I did. Okay, now they measure up. Good, good. Okay, we're gonna glue this little piece onto here. And this is just gonna kind of create a metallic top. Just a little bit of contrast. You probably won't notice it too much um, on this project because there's a lot of grays, but if the light catches it, it's gonna give kind of just a metallic sheen, which is, it's a potting bench. If you're a gardener, um, you might know what that is. So we're gonna to put Tombow all on this piece. This piece doesn't get any Tombow, just this, the front of this piece. 
we're going to slide it in here and it's going to adhere behind this bridge piece, okay? So let's grab this, put the chomper on here. Okay, we're gonna slide it in here. And then just line it up. It's gonna match up with the bottom right here. The two bottoms match up, so you don't really have to do too much. And this piece should just easily pop down in there. Okay, looking good. All right, so now we just have to add the last part of the structural part of this card. And that is these doors right here, okay? So we're going to take our two four and a quarter squares that we've scored and just bend them. All right. And then we're going to adhere them right over top. So this is kind of nice because there's a bit of a uh, extra cardstock piece here, a little line. So um, you're gonna adhere these right over top of that and now you're gonna have a smooth wall for later on. So I'm gonna put Tombow on here. And I'm gonna match this up. The fold is right along the edge of the card. So I'm just gonna line it up with my fingers and then press down. Do the same for the other side. Put Tombow on this piece. Make sure these match up. Okay. Press down. All right, so here is the structural part of the card. We've got our doors and we've got our bench. And so the card base is all ready to go. Now I'm gonna show you how I added all the pieces onto here and how the, all the die cuts work. Okay, so first of all, let's do these outer barn doors or shed doors. So I've got a lot of little pieces here. So now all there is left to do is the decoration. Okay, so we need these pieces. We need these pieces. Oh, I know we need one more set of little pieces. Okay. All right, so I've got two panels of designer series paper here. Let me tell you what how they measure um, card front. These are two and a half inches by four inches. Two and a half inches by four inches. Then I took a bunch of strips of basic white. I need four of them. Oh, I'm missing one. I need four little strips of basic white. And these measure five and a half inches by a quarter inch. So what I'm gonna do I'm gonna make these cross pieces. I'll take my Tombow and I'm just gonna put a little bit right in the center. We're gonna cut part of these pieces off. I'm gonna line it this side up with the corner and this side up with the other corner. Press down. And I'll take another strip and I'm gonna do the same thing. Just put it in the center for now. We're gonna add some Tombow at the ends in a second. And we're gonna come along, just that corner is to that side. And this corner is to this side. There's enough length on these strips that you're going to have 
room to cut off and that's why I don't put Tombow all the way to the ends because I'm not sure where those are going to be yet. All right so then we're going to flip this over and you're going to see that uh, we're just going to cut off the excess just right along the edge of right like that. Okay and then those extra pieces can go in the garbage and we've got something that looks like this. Now these pieces right here um, are going to need a little Tombow so I'm going to put a little dot of Tombow on the four little ends. You can kind of see I hold that up. I just put a little dot on the end and then I'll flip this over and I'm just going to secure those pieces. So that's the first part of the cross. Let's do it for the other panel. So we'll again, we'll just put a little Tombow in the center. We'll line this up with this corner up at the top and then at the bottom. You have a little moment to get it positioned because the glue will, will maneuver for you. And then when you think you've got it pretty close, just press down on the center and do the same for this other piece. Bring it along and over here. Press down. Oh, I shifted. Press down in the center. Flip it over. And now we'll just cut off the excess. Excess. And excess. All right. Barn door, shed door. All right, and now we're gonna stamp a little greeting on one of these pieces. And um, these pieces measure two and a half inches by three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to take my basic gray ink pad. I don't know if Happy Father's Day will fit across here. Oh yeah, it will. Okay, so we're gonna take this piece. Um, since I did a birthday card before, I'm going to do, let's have a look here. I'm going to do a Happy Father's Day one this time. So I'm just going to ink this up. And I want to leave a little end, um, a little bit on the end right there. Okay, I'm going to need to shove this down a little bit. Okay, that's pretty good. We're going to leave this little piece uh, blank at the side because that's going to be where I'm going to put a little handle in a moment. Okay, so we're going to come back over here and here are our two doors and we're going to put Happy Father's Day right across there. That's going to be the center part of our door. And just kind of position it across. And then we'll add some to this side. And this side doesn't have a greeting or anything on it. We want to make sure, let's line these up. Want to make sure that these are pretty centered. So that when the doors are closed in the middle, they look right. Okay. So one other thing I want to do, I do need to do some um, die cutting pieces that I, I want to add to the front to create little um, door handles. And I want to add some grass. I've got, I know I cut one little grass piece. Let's bring out our die cut machine. Let's just go ahead and do this right now before I forget. We bring out little mini boss today. Little mini boss is ready to help us. It's not going to take up so much space. There we go. Little mini boss is here. So one thing with the mini boss, 
um, until I figured out my sandwich, I was not happy with this machine. So it comes with a number one plate that they say to use as a base plate, but my machine is a little tight. So when I use the number one plate, it doesn't run through very well. So I'm putting number one plate away. I'm going to put, use number four plate is for embossing folders. So we don't need that one. We're going to use the light gray plate, which is labeled number three. And we're going to need two cutting plates and they're labeled number two. Okay, so let's grab some this. And I've got some garden green cardstock here. We're gonna come and grab our dies. We've got these two little pieces that look like grass. And I'm just gonna pop these up here. So the other day when I was die cutting, <laughs> I flipped one of these right into my garbage and I could not find it. It went somewhere into my garbage and I could not find it afterwards. It was so annoying. I had to cut another piece. <sighs> Drives me crazy, you know, when things just flip into the garbage. Okay. Here's my little piece. Put that aside. And right here sometimes I'll drop this in the grass or whatever we'll oh see that there it did it it drop will drop right out or you can use like a pin or a thumbtack or a piercing tool and just pop them out using the little die cut holes on there if that happens but sometimes if I just drop it on my tabletop the little die piece will fall out and then I don't have to find my paper piercing tool okay and then the other thing I want to die cut let me find a piece right here. I want to take a little piece of silver foil and I'm going to take, I don't need a very large piece. Maybe I'll do it like this. No, I'll do it like this because there's, um, otherwise there won't be too much to grab onto. So um, this piece right here, it just looks like a shelf or a beam a log a long log and I'm just going to run it through with some silver foil okay and I'm gonna this is I'm gonna use for my handles okay so I'm gonna scoot mini boss just to the side because guess what? I'm going to need it in a moment again and I don't want it to go too far. All right, so then we're gonna come in with our trimmer and we're going to, I'm gonna use the flat side and I just need tiny little pieces of this. I'm gonna cut half an inch And then we'll do another half an inch. Come here. Okay. So just by adding that little bit of texture on there, it looks more like a handle. Okay. So bring back in our panel pieces them the correct way and let's add a little bit of Tombow and we're going to just add this right here it's going to make it look like a little handle okay the nice thing about this card is you can make it men and women both love gardening so this is is a card for uh, someone who likes to garden so you can definitely make it up however you want you could put whatever greeting you want across here right you could do too if you had like a big happy birthday you could do happy on one side and birthday on the other so you can really do different things with it for the front, for the front greeting. Okay, so then, oops, one more thing. Wanna add the grass on here while I can. I'm going to put the grass along um, 
this piece rather than the dark gray piece because it's small and I want it to pop on the white. So I'm going to take one of these and just add it right to the corner because your garden shed is going to be in the garden. So right around the edge, you're going to have a little grass growing, right? So that's why that makes sense. In my brain, it makes sense, right? Okay. So now we're going to add these. If you think the gray color is a little, um, doesn't pop enough or whatever, you could pop this up like with a brighter color. Like you could do, you could even do like bright red, like a barn door kind of deal. You know, you could really pop this up. This background paper could be a cardstock color or it could be a bright party paper. I kind of just went with more like the look of an actual shed. So mine might not be as bright and colorful, but we need to make cards. You know what? There's a little piece sticking out. We need to make cards for a variety of people and not all. Okay, I've got glue on here. Not all people are bright party people kind of cards. So you have to make cards that fit different types, different personality types. Last week's card, my windmill card, that was a bright colored card. So there we go. There's the front. You know what? I feel like this handle got a little high on this one side. So just make sure when you're aligning things that um, you align them properly because I got a little higher on one side. I think I glued this panel a little, a little um, more towards the top than the bottom. So it's just a tiny bit off. That's going to bother me, but it probably won't bother you. Um, I could come in here and fix that later on. I could ship this uh, white piece down a little bit. I would maybe pry it off and then just bring it down just a little bit. I might need to recut it, but okay. If you, if you put it on straight, it's not a mechanical issue. It's uh, a Brenda aligning things kind of issue. Okay, so now we've got the inside of the card. So we're going to st um, stamp and die cut a bunch of tools to go in here. So let's grab some cardstock. And I use kind of pastel colors um, for mine. Let's see. Oh, we need some of these. I've already die cut some of these here. Probably easier if I just dump them out and then I've got this panel here. Okay. All right, let's grab my stamps. They're across the room in the basket. It's down here for a moment. All right, so let's start off. We're gonna stamp the shovel. Okay, there's enough room. I'm using basic gray for all my stamping. So easy. So just tap, tap, tap. This is the shovel and this is on balmy blue. And then I'm going to come in here with, um, this is the ladder. And I'm going to stamp this on pale papaya. And then we've got the gardening shears, also on pale papaya. And we've got our little, I don't know what to call that. It's like a, a mini spade or something like that. I don't know. I haven't gardened in a long, long time. Okay, so then the gardening gloves I'm going to do on fresh freesia. And, oh, I'm missing one. Oh, I need a piece of soft succulent. I'm going to grab it. I forgot to bring it across the room. Okay, so this is a rake. And we'll stamp it on here. 
All right, I think I've got everything stamped that I need to stamp. And let's do some die cutting. Mini boss is coming back into the room. because we don't have um, a magnetic plate or anything right now I'm just going to use some post-it note tape to hold my pieces on so they don't shift during the die cutting process so I've got the rake and I'm going to line it up onto my piece and when I like how that looks I'm going to tape it into place, bring my second plate on top, and I'm going to run this through. Okay, so there's the rake and the shovel. It's kind of nice I don't have to cut all out all of these pieces and I said before like this is a special card because I am definitely you know adding a lot of little pieces to this card but we all have to make those really special cards so it's nice to have um, all of these pieces that we can die cut to put on the card okay so there's that then we're gonna do the gloves around stick that down I'm telling you I love my little mini boss now it's just a lot easier to run things through mini boss okay and then we've got these guys first I'm gonna do these one at a time because it will be easier this way Let's see. Bring that up. Okay. All right. These little pieces pop out, and then the ladder pops out. And then, getting down to the wire. We have a few more pieces to go. Let's see. Get that one lined up. It's amazing how you can get one side lined up and then the other one still isn't lined up. Okay. Shall I be brave and do two at a time? I just need another piece of post-it tape. And sometimes it's nice to show you just how everything is put together, right? Because if I always do everything off camera, you're not going to see how all of these little die cut pieces come together. Okay, so now the last thing I want to do before I put my die cutting machine away is I need to cut some of the metallic pieces. So I've got the bottom of my shovel, I've got the little gardening spade, and I've got the top part of my shears, so I'm just going to stick these down. They, I, they feel like they're going to go rolling around. Let's go through and do all of those all at once. Okay, 
So we've got all the little metallic pieces and this is with the silver foil. And the other thing that I already had two extra pieces, so I'm not gonna die cut them, but I wanted to show you. Um, I did these out of silver foil and it's this piece right here. I just need two of these little, these are actually supposed to be for hanging things in your shed or your garage, they're little hangers, but I'm gonna cut them down a little bit to make little cupboard handles. So you just need two of these little shapes cut out. And um, yeah, so I won't do those on camera. And I think I've got everything die cut. So let's bring in all the little pieces. And let's put them together. So we've got the little handheld spade and this little metallic piece is going to go over top. That's so cute, right? And it's got metallic sheen to it. We've got our shovel. Maybe this is also called the spade. I don't know, could be. And we'll add this over top. Looks pretty cool. And then we've got our shears, trimmers, and we're gonna add that right over top. that metallic look. So cute, right? Okay, and then for these little pieces, I just wanna make them into little squares. So I'm gonna cut off those little pieces that, that little piece right there. So I want that little square portion and this is the little piece that comes off of it right here and that I can throw away. But I'm gonna keep this little piece and that's gonna be my little cupboard handle. Okay, and I need two of those. All right, I think we're rocking and rolling. So now we can start adding all of the pieces to our front. So we're gonna start off, we're gonna create our little cupboards on the front first. So let me give you the measurements for those. I'm looking, card front, the inside. Um, these little pieces measure one and one eighths by one and five eighths, okay? And they're just gonna fit right down here. Kind of centered and you can flatten the card which is nice right okay go to this other one here I learned my lesson from the outside I'm gonna glue these down first and then I'm gonna add my handles just in case they're a little bit askew so the handles line up. Gosh, I hate it when handles don't line up. And I think I'm gonna turn this down like this. Turn, turn, turn. I like these little metallic handles. Have you ever gone shopping for kitchen handles or bathroom handles? I have, there's so many things to choose from and there's so many different prices. It's kind of crazy. You find one that you like and then it's like super expensive. And so then you try and find another one that's similar that might not be as expensive if you have to do like a whole house full. Okay, so there are my little cupboard handles. Aren't they cute? Okay, so then up top here, if you were gonna stamp something on your walls, you would have needed to do that while everything was flat. But I'm gonna just pop this down here. Um, and I'm gonna put this here and this here. So, put 
so I'm going to tell them about one here. And just kind of find a good spot to glue that down. And one for this one right here. Okay, so then the gloves right here, they can theoretically hang off just a little bit. Um, the key for this will be, you don't want to put any glue on the overhanging portion, but when this folds flat, it's going to be like this, and when it's open, it's going to be like this. So, just put a little bit of Tombow near the top, near the fingers, so you know that nothing's going to get glued down. And then you can kind of just see where you want to place these. I just want mine hanging off just a little bit. Okay. And then when this is flat, come on, it's not all the way flat. Okay, when this is flat, um, it's still gonna close properly, okay? All right, so then we've got our shovel our rake and our ladder. So we'll just add these centered on each of the panels. I'm gonna want this up a little bit. I don't know if it's gonna let me go up a little bit. Okay, it's gonna be right there and it's not gonna move. Okay, we'll put this one on here. And then we're gonna put the ladder on. You know, if you wanted to add a little bit more depth and dimension, you could also add designer series paper behind the gray of the shed walls if you wanted to. You could add some extra panel pieces. Um, if you wanted a little bit more texture. So then the final piece, and um, I am going to do this with my card, but you could also um, add something different on this side panel piece. Like, so if you're going to do a Father's Day card, we did Happy Father's Day on the um, front, so you can add um, uh, like a, a little greeting onto this panel right here. This panel measures two and three eighths by three and seven eighths. So um, you could decide like you could do like dad, thanks for helping me grow um, because that's the theme, it's the garden shed. So you could stamp whatever you wanted on this inside panel, and then you still have room to write a little message right here. So I'm gonna leave this blank for now. Actually, you know what? Let's stamp something on here because this is already a Father's Day card. So let's go ahead and do, I just didn't have the stamps ready to go, but. We're gonna pop them on some blocks here and we're gonna do this. Why not, right? Always better to do stamping on your panel before you glue it in though, in case you make a mistake. So you can do, put this right here, dad. And I'm gonna add there's a little bit more on this side, so I'm gonna, hopefully I guessed right there. Dad, thanks for helping me grow. And then, I can add this panel to the inside.
So if you wanted to turn this into a more feminine card, we don't have any flowers in this stamp set, but I'm sure you probably have a stamp set that has flowers or something in it. So what I would suggest is you could have a really neutral background, but you could have some little flowers or die cut flowers kind of growing up a little bit on the sides here. Um, then you could put like a little um, flower on the inside here too. I've got a little um, grass piece on, um, you could add just a little tiny bit of grass. Now that has too much glue on it. Spread it out with the, Thanks for helping me grow. I just have a little green grass on the bottom corner. I know this is inside the shed. There's a crack in the shed floor and something's growing out of it. So you could add just a little uh, green grass to the inside. And so this is what it looks like. Um, you're gonna, um, the person's going to receive it flat, then this, and then they can just shift this over and then this pops down to create this card right here. So I love, love, love this card because it takes a really awesome concept, the bench card, and now it makes it a card that actually has a front closure to it. So it's more like a little bit more like a traditional card, but you can put it in a medium envelope and then you can send it flat. So what do you think, like, do you think you could make this card into, you know, a different, um, with a different theme, right? We've got that. Um, you could do it for whatever theme that you have um, stamps for, right? So there's the card. What do you think? Did you like that? I hope so. I worked on the measurements. I tell you, sometimes um, it's really hard to come up with really good measurements. You have to tweak it a little bit. How wide do you make the bench? Um, I needed to make sure that it fit into a five and a half envelope, the whole closure with a, it took a little while to figure everything out. So I hope, I hope the card is useful for you. Um, if you love my channel and you're new to it, please subscribe. Um, look for my little picture in the bottom corner and uh, click on it and it will take you to my subscribe page. And then make sure you click on the bell too so you can get notified when I go live. I do go live every Friday at 10, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on my YouTube channel. And on Tuesdays, I go live at 10 a.m. Eastern on Facebook. I do have a um, host code gift for the month. If you want to place an order with me, um, there is my um, host code. If you want to get the uh, products that I use today, um, use this um, host code when you're placing your order. There's a spot to put it in. And my gift of the month are these um, brass butterflies. I've been using them a lot. So you'll get a full pack of these, um, not my partial pack. Um, and that's what you'll get in the mail in May from me uh, along with a thank you card. Um, and then you'll also get to choose one of my tutorials for free. Um, to get the gift of the month, you need to spend at least $50 to get uh, a free tutorial. Um, it just, you're to your order just needs to be over $15. Um, no matter what the size to um, order you have, just as long as it's over 15, you will get a free tutorial choice. All right, I'm going to go through and answer your questions. Um, one thing, if you're looking for my supply list, just look in the description of the video. I put a lot of things in there. Um, I was a librarian in a past life and I am very detail oriented. So hopefully you'll find everything I talked about today. Um, and my blog post is kind of my central um, page. So my blog post will also have the supply list. So if you want photos of what I did today, just click over to my blog post. It's the very first link in um, the description um, in the second sentence. Okay. I'm going to see how you guys are today. See if you have any questions for me. Please ask. I love questions. 
Good morning, Ellie from New York. Good morning, Birgit. Good morning, Dee and Deborah and Queenie and Jeannie. We've got, okay, I haven't said all the places. I'm from New York, from Germany, from um, Missouri, from Virginia, from Michigan, from Indiana. Hello, Janine. Good morning, Carol from Gatineau. How lovely. I've been to Gatineau before. Um, good morning. Uh, from Ver Blue from Tennessee. I've lived in Tennessee before. Um, good morning, Karen. Um, Karen's going to watch the replay. Good morning, Denise. Oh, it's Earth Day. Hey, that's a perfect day. I didn't even realize the coincidence. My card is a garden shed card. Um, uh, the earth and gardening tools and stuff. It, not that gardening is, is necessarily earthy, but if you grow your own um, uh, fruits and vegetables and plants, that um, definitely has the Earth Day theme to it. So... Um, Good morning, Tina. <laughs> I'm just reading. Tina's excited about the barn doors. Good morning, Kathy. She's going to watch the replay. Birgit says it's a cool card. Um, I wonder what else you could create instead of the shed. So, you know, um, there... I, I would have done a sample using the What's Cooking bundle that's retiring, but the stamp set sold out and um, the dies are still available for that one. But you could also do like the kitchen theme if you have kitchen themed um, uh, dies because, you know, a lot of times we've got like French doors going on, you know, coming into the kitchen. So the nice thing is like you could decorate this part up however you want. You could make it look, you could make it look more um, like it going into a kitchen. I just created mine to make it look more like a, um, a shed. So, it, or if you were doing the garage theme with tools, right, then make it look more like, um, make it look more like um, garage doors, right? Um, I'm trying to think you you it would still open side to side it wouldn't open up to up down but it could also be like a tool shed rather than like a garden shed right so you can decorate those front doors however you want and I think it's nice no matter what because you're creating a front piece to your card um I experimented too like you could have done it like slightly differently but then the layout would be differently I like this because it lengths lengthens the card in a symmetrical fashion but you could also um do just one panel that comes across the front so this would be five and a half but then all of your length would be on one side so you know you could really just do whatever you wanted for the front because it's just kind of like a showcase that kind of opens up you know I think of it as like a card opening but that's a really good question how what else you could do for the front um, I'd love to see what you guys come up with um, good morning I have some from Sweden hello Ann Kristen um, and Kristen asked a good question. I hope I answered it before. I go live every Friday at this time, so you can mark it down. I don't know what time it is in Sweden right now, but yes, um, uh, it's. I usually go live at 10 a.m. Eastern, so it's right on the hour um, mark. So yes, that's when I'm live. Good morning, Carol. Um, let's see. D says you could do the gardening gloves on a pretty designer series paper for a Mother's Day card or a female birthday card. Yes, I love that, D. I didn't even think about that. I was so worried about the structure of the card. I didn't get too fancy on anything else. So if you take my structure of the card and you pretty up, make it even prettier, I will be extremely happy with that. I'm a girl who loves the construction side of things. I love the measurements. I love how the card comes together. That's like my happy place. 
And then I see people take my car design and make it 10 times more beautiful because they add all of those details on it. And I, that's awesome. I love that idea. I'm going to have to remember it for the future. Stamp it on some pretty floral paper. And we had floral paper in there um, in this pack. I could have stamped it on either the purple paper, this paper right here. That would have looked pretty for the gloves, right? Or um, I could have done this paper, the um, little floral paper. Now you make me want to go back and amp up my gloves, D. All right, let's keep going. Um, thank you for all the compliments. Good morning, Cindy from Washington State. Bear Blue says, what a lovely Father's Day card. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. You have a great weekend, too. Um, and Kristen's going to uh, make one as a craft chat. Oh, that's an excellent idea. Oh, I love that. Um, I, I hope you send me a photo of that. Um, there's my contact information down below. If you send me um, uh, a uh, your contact email through that I can send you my email address and and I'd love to see how that turns out that sounds wonderful um, thank you Denise um, I'm glad you think it's a great card well guys I hope you have a great weekend thank you so much for joining me this morning uh, I hope you get a chance to make this card a little bit different than your traditional uh, veg full cards so I hope I can't wait to see what you do with it Take care, everyone. Look for my project sheet in your mail tomorrow. Bye-bye.